Good morning everyone. Today we are going to discuss about form sensing and its control. So at the end of the class you will be able to know the reasons for form formation and different measuring methods and how to control form. So these things we will discuss today. So you know that in most microbiological or fermentation processes forming is considered as a major problem. Form in fermentation process is defined as the entrapment of many air bubbles or other gases in culture medium or in fermentation growth. This uh, form is mainly classified into two types in fermentation process. They are stable forms and unstable forms. So if you take uh, stable forms, uh, they are uh, uniform in size, long lasting as well as rigid. Whereas unstable forms are uh, will have different varying ranges of sizes, bubble sizes. They are short lived transitory. So these two types of forms generally we will see in any fermentation process. Uh, along with this, here another important thing is foam never occurs in any pure uh, liquids. Even if you introduce gas, uh, surface active uh, components will be very very less in the pure water, almost zero. So that uh, formation of uh, foam will be almost negligible. Whereas uh, in fermentation media, which will have different types of components, so foam formation will be very very high. So the degree of foaming during fermentation process is affected by introduction of the nutrients or medium composition or it uh, self growth, it also uh, affect the uh, foam formation, metabolite formation during the process and su surface active pro components formation during the process and also vessel geometry also will have some effect on the uh, foam formation uh, process. Okay. The most common cause of foaming uh, is presence of proteins in the medium, culture medium. So protein components such as corn seed liquor, uh, yeast extract or meal extract, uh, peanut meal, soya bean meal, all these will, uh, will result into high foam formation in any process. Foam formation in fermentation process results high pressures. Okay? If uncontrolled, then it may create numerous physical and biological problems. Uh, for example, if you take the foam in the fermenter uh, move upwards due to its low density uh, compared to the fermentation medium. So it quickly reaches the upward, uh, upward portion. So when it uh, touches the, if it reaches the top of the fermenter, okay, then it will try to come out through the exhaust outlet filter. So during this process, wet and sticky media present in the medium or microorganism present in the medium can block the exhaust filter. So due to this blockage, pressure will rise drastically uh, in the fermenter, uh, in the fermenter. Okay. So this high pressure um, present in the fermenter uh, vessel can lead to the slow cultivations or reduced productivity. If the filters are completely blocked, the elevated pressure in the vessel can cause the filters either to burst or it may activate to uh, open it may activate the opening of the high pressure control valve. In any case, okay, whether it burst or it will act if it activates the high pressure control valve, this fermentation media water present inside all will come out. Our spillage will take place. So it will it is a, it will cause a potential health hazard as well as it also creates the a large cleaning tasks. Okay, so we have to avoid these things. Okay, not only that, uh, the pressure of uh, uh, the presence of uh, small bubbles in fermentation media may affect the, uh, it may interfere with the electrode sensors and will cause false readings because these false readings will get uh, invalid uh, data. So that the uh, monitoring and uh, control of the process will be very very difficult. Uh, one more thing is microorganism present uh, or trapped in the foam experience uh, uh, nutritional or oxygen uh, limitations because of low heat and mass transfer rate. Not only that, the product formation in the process also will be very very less because of this low heat and mass transfer rate. 
along with this uh, sometimes uh, uh, because of high foam present uh, presence the working volume we use will be very very less working volume also will be reduced so to avoid all these things compulsory we have to eliminate the foam from the process so now we'll discuss about foam controlling methods the formation of foam is a difficulty in many microbial fermentations which can create serious problems if uncontrolled in general foam uh, controlling methods falls into three categories they are physical methods chemical methods and mechanical methods physical methods are designed to prevent foam by the by using ultrasound and thermal and electrical treatments okay but in fermentation uh, these are not recommended so in fermentation we use only two methods okay uh, they are chemical methods and mechanical methods chemical methods are designed to break the foam by addition of chemicals so we call those chemicals as uh, anti foaming agents or Uh, deforming agents strictly speaking these two are different okay uh, but uh, frequently they are used interchangeably okay anti foam is added before the start of the fermentation process if uh, foam forms okay then to minimize the foam we use deformers these two are completely different okay but we can use interchangeably okay the methods used for foam sensing and anti foam addition will vary from process to process and also this will depends on the uh, economic concentrations followed in the process or industry this anti foams are generally uh, added uh, during the fermentation process or uh, sorry during the foaming process okay uh, in fermentations uh, because many anti foams are uh, low solubility in fermentation media so they need they require carriers therefore carriers such as lard oil liquid paraffin oil or castor oil are added but during the process these oils may metabolize and they may affect the fermentation process also but these also will be taken care by the controllers okay so most widely used uh, anti foaming agents are alcohol such as sterile alcohol and or um, octyl decanol esters can be used fatty acids and derivatives particularly glycerides can be used which includes uh, cotton seed oil rape seed oil sunflower oil soya bean oil uh, olive oil these are all can be used silicones can be used sulfonates can be used and miscellaneous uh, chemicals such as uh, polypropylene glycol l alkates uh, c or oxaline uh, these are also can be used for this purpose so here the controlling of the process is very very important so we have so far we have discussed about the reason for foam formation and uh, different types of uh, anti foaming agents in chemical methods we have discussed it. similarly we'll have mechanical methods that we'll discuss later okay so now we'll uh, see how uh, the process is controlled by using chemical methods with an example okay see here we have taken a fermenter this is our fermenter traditional fermenter we want to control this fermenter by using a uh, foam sensor okay so assume that here foam is forming so foam will be we always will be at the top of the fermentation broth here we have to place the sensor okay here the sensor is nothing but the stainless steel here for foam sensing we use electrodes these are stainless steel uh, it will be uh, insulated everywhere except the tip okay so we place the sensor at some le level above the fermentation broth so during the fermentation uh, foam will form here and if grow foam is uh, very high it will come it will travel towards the up because of its low density and it will touch the probe whenever this foam uh, foam touches the probe immediately uh, uh, current will pass through this probe because this uh, foam foam will act as electrolyte and this vessel will act as the earth so that this entire circuit electrical circuit will be completed so whenever this foam touches this uh, probe immediately current will be passed so because of the based on that uh, current signal okay detector we call it as detector or controller okay that will detect that foam is formed immediately that will switch on that will activate the timer 
as well as the activate the final control element that means wall so here wall will be wall may be open okay or it may start the pump okay anything you can take so if it pump starts immediately whatever uh, anti-foaming uh, uh, agents present in this reservoir will enter into this uh, fermentation process for the predetermined determined time here timers will be there so it will be fixed generally these timers will be less than a minute okay 0 to 5 seconds or 0 to 10 seconds generally we have so 5 seconds it will run for example take 5 seconds so 5 seconds uh, this antiform will enter into the process so after completion of process immediately mixer will start okay so mixing cycle will start this also will last for uh, 0 to 60 seconds okay so after addition of the antifobing agents mixing has to be done so that complete mixing will take place because that mixing this antifobing agents may bring the fermentation broth uh, uh, it may bring the uh, foam uh, to lower levels or it may decrease or it may completely eliminate also okay so where if it doesn't eliminate no problem because we are using a feedback controller so once this addition cycle mixing cycle uh, addition cycle and mixing cycle is completed again it will measure the value and again it will calculate okay uh, based on that again it will actuate the uh, timer as well as pump in that way this will uh, work okay this process is a continuous process so in that way a foam present in this process will be fermentation process will be eliminated okay uh, uh, when you come to the mechanical methods they are designed to break the foam by mechanical devices okay so here stirrer itself will have uh, propellers or brushes or agitators or discs it will contain so whenever that steering rod rotates okay at the top uh, from above that uh, steering position okay we'll have that uh, uh, propellers for example in this figure here we have a stirrer here it is for uh, mixing here we'll have that propellers okay these propellers will break that one break whatever foam present okay and it will throw the foam towards the walls of the fermentation tank uh, tank so when it touches if it will collide the walls immediately it will break okay it is just like uh, milk in our home we, when, uh, when when we heat the milk the foam forms okay to uh, minimize that foam what we do we use the spoon and we'll uh, disturb that means we'll agitate so that that entire foam will break same manner here also it will break okay for uh, this we can also use uh, uh, centrifugal foam breakers nozzles sprayers also we can use okay but unfortunately most of the dev devices are used in combination with the chemical uh, anti-foaming agents okay then only we'll get the effective control okay so this is how we control the foaming uh, in fermentation process thank you for listening